Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a development in AI security that's a lot less recent than you might think. AI-based biometric security in airports. As with most topics on this channel, we're going to focus on the US, and in this case it's because the Transportation Security Administration, or the TSA, released a plan to incorporate biometric security into US airports. As always, all of my sources are in the description box, including a PDF from the TSA that outlines this entire plan, if you're interested in reading more. So let's start from the beginning. What is biometric data? Biometric data is a pretty broad term that encompasses any sort of human-related information. This might be your height, your weight, your age, your face, or your fingerprints. It can also be your irises for eye scans, as well as your DNA. In the case of airport security and government records generally, it usually refers to your face, so an image of yourself, and your fingerprints. Biometric security has been increasingly implemented into modern technology. Fingerprint and facial recognition based security is now common in laptops and cell phones. I have the iPhone 8 Plus and I use my fingerprint to open it up every, well, I would say every day, but it's probably more frequent than that. And the main incentive for this is the fact that we aren't usually that great at creating passwords. We either create a password that's too easy to guess, a password that we use for every single account ever, so once you've guessed it once, you've guessed it for everything, or passwords that are as secure and complex as they need to be, but then we forget the password. Ideally, biometric security sidesteps these issues because the password is you and you can't forget it. Now, the TSA is interested in using biometric data from the other side of the equation. It doesn't need a password, it needs a way of verifying that you are who you say you are. Their plan for this includes four major steps. And before we start, I'll say this plan is not particularly detailed, at least from the information that I could find, so there are places where they say that they're going to do things for reasons that I don't fully understand and that I didn't feel were adequately explained in the report. First, the TSA is planning to partner with Customs and Border Patrol to use biometric security for international traveling. Now, this step has actually already been implemented in a lot of airports, including Los Angeles and Boston Logan. Before this was implemented, you would show your boarding pass to the person at the flight desk when you want to board the plane, and when you got off the plane, you would go through Customs and Border Patrol, adding them that little sheet that you have to fill out, so that you can declare anything that you're bringing back into the country. These updated security procedures have facial recognition instead of a boarding pass when you board the plane, and this is at LAX, not at Boston Logan, and I'm not sure if it's at other airports yet. And then when you get off the plane from an international flight, you go through a kiosk that uses facial recognition to match a picture that it takes of you in that moment to your passport. As you can imagine, coming off of an international flight that's probably at least six hours long, everyone looks amazing. You also answer all of the forms that you answered on the Customs and Border Patrol form, which I don't really get, and the kiosk then prints out your answers along with your picture and you bring it up to the CBP officer for them to declare that you can enter the country. The second step in this plan focuses on expanding biometric security to all TSA pre-check users, going from fingerprints only to fingerprints and facial recognition. TSA pre-check is a program that allows people to skip the main security line in favor of a shorter and more expedited security process. They allow this by pre-screening people. You have to apply, submit your information, and then you usually go through an interview, and having your fingerprints on record so they know your background before you even step in the airport. You give them your known traveler number every time you book a flight so that they can do all the pre-screening before you even get there. It's essentially the US only version of Global Entry, which is an international program that does the same thing. The TSA is interested in expanding the use of biometric security to these domestic travelers, so people that they already have some information on record for in the form of fingerprints, but not all information on record for in the form of facial recognition. They're hoping that this will increase enrollment, which I'm not entirely sure why it would, and create a more secure re-enrollment process. So instead of having to go back and do everything all over again, you pay $85 and you get it for three years, you would be able to re-enroll more securely based on that facial recognition. The third step is a further expansion of biometric security for domestic travelers. So instead of just the TSA pre-check people, everyone who's traveling domestically in the United States would have these fingerprints and facial recognition on file. 
At this point, it would essentially be like everyone has TSA pre-check. Every time you'd book a flight, this information would be on record. They would be able to pre-screen you and you'd go to the airport. And in theory, the lines will be shorter, which we'll talk about a little bit at the end. And then the last step's pretty vague. Essentially, the TSA would like to continue developing and expanding this biometric security program and creating ways to facilitate data sharing between federal agencies so that they would have access to more information on travelers and be able to do more security vetting. The plan doesn't state whether this would be a bi-directional sharing process, that is, that says that they would like to be able to access more biometric data so that they can expand this program to cover more travelers, but it doesn't say if the data that they're using would then be sent to other agencies. Okay, so you won't have to carry a boarding pass anymore and you're gonna get your face scanned after six hours on a flight looking great. Who cares? Well, you should, for a couple of reasons. First off, one of the goals of this plan seems to be to expedite the security process. And while this could be beneficial for those who travel by air, I'm not convinced it's going to expedite it that much. Anecdotally, I have TSA pre-check, and I can definitely say that the TSA pre-check line is shorter than the main security line usually is, but expanding TSA pre-check to everyone just means that everyone who's in that main security line now goes into the pre-check line and the line is as long as it always was. In terms of the facial recognition kiosks, in my experience, they're just another line before you have to get in line to talk to the CBP officer anyway, and you answer a lot of the stuff that you've already answered on this form. So I suppose it's a better way of tracking the information that you write down on that form because then it's all digital and they don't have to worry about like reading your handwriting and transcribing it. But it doesn't seem to make this process go any faster. Now it's possible that this plan involves some other change to Customs and Border Patrol that would make that second line shorter, but that's not outlined anywhere in the plan, so... Second, there's a lot of issues with the use of facial recognition as we talked about in our crash course in facial recognition video. There's a potential that you might be misidentified as someone you're not, especially if you're underrepresented in whatever training data that they use for this algorithm. Now, the TSA might have fail safes to mitigate this issue, but again, this is not discussed in this plan. And then finally, there's the issue of general privacy and surveillance. Unlike passwords, you can't change your biometric data, at least not easily. And while this definitely is not discussed in the plan, a lot of this updated security relies on the ability of the government to track you as you move through the country and through the world. Now, this isn't to say that the government's already doing this, because they are, but it is to say that it makes this whole process a lot easier, especially with data sharing. So should you be concerned? Honestly, I'm not sure. The Venn diagram of people discussing AI ethics and social ramifications and the entities implementing AI for the public often feel like two non-overlapping circles. So I'm not particularly surprised that there's no discussion of ethics in this plan. On the other hand, Congress, which has the power to regulate the TSA, has been proposing committees and legislation that aim to tackle a lot of these fairness and bias issues in artificial intelligence. At the very least, I'd say it's definitely something to keep an eye on. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you again so much to all of my current patrons. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.